Okay, from the beginning. Nice round ball of clay. Push it on there. Pound it down. Give yourself speed. Find your bracing. Moisten your hands and press strongly down into the bat. And I've got this kind of angle, not straight up and down, because see how this is pyramid shaped? It's because my hands are pyramid shaped and I'm pressing down here, down there, and down there. And then I wanna bring it down, get cozy, Get cozy, hug it, it down, keep the moisture going. It's just moisture, it's not dumping water. It's just constant re-wetting. You want it slippery underneath your hands. And this is slip, what's on here. And that is a very good lubricant better than the water because it sticks around a little longer. Bring it down. My left hand now has hit the bat, so I can't go further in that configuration of my hand. Now I take this one, I press it against my left hand, which is very strong, and is braced near to the splash pan, and I'm going to lower this hand down. And I, my, the fat of my hand here is shaping that edge. My left hand is also responsible for the shaping. Making sure it's centered. Nice, calm hands. Okay, and I'm gonna drill the hole at a crater shape. Dead center fingertip dead center, finger at a diagonal angle to create the crater shape. And I am gonna stop and measure because I do not wanna go too far. That's good. I'd say it's a quarter of an inch to three eighths of an inch. This little lip happened. I'm gonna smooth that with my sponge, kind of naturally curves. Keeping everything smooth so that it doesn't shear off. Now I need to open a floor and I'm going to use this part, kind of the sharper part of my finger. I'm gonna move like that. And this hand is gonna help it move nice and flat. Nice and horizontal. Nice flat floor. And I'm going to make sure I don't over open it. We're using a pound and a half. Cylinders, yay big. And we want, by the time we open up the inside, we want, we still want thick walls. I don't know what this measurement is, but um, it's about like that. And I'm opening the floor about like that. And I will show you. I'm gonna get the water out of the center. So, still nice thick walls. And now I'm gonna massage this wall, or this floor, excuse me, the floor from here to here. And I'm gonna make sure that I don't keep bumping the wall open more. So I'm gonna massage right in this area and the whale's gonna be spinning so the fl whole floor will get massaged. Again, I don't want to keep bumping into the wall and opening up. Once I've opened that diameter, keep that diameter inside. Okay, that's massaged. Now I'm gonna fix that, make it smooth. Again, don't want any little thing sticking off to the side and then getting sheared off. I'm now going to pull up the wall, so I've dug a little divot 
And I'm gonna rotate because I want you to be able to see what I'm, what the, I want you to be able to see the clay. So when I work, uh, this is gonna happen at about between three and 3.30 on the dial. So this is three o'clock at six o'clock. You're at noon right now, but you gotta think like me. So my thumb is gonna get right down on the bat and there's a little bulge forming right here. And I want that bulge to stay there because that's what gives me the grip, but I don't want it to get exaggerated. So this hand is gonna get in here and just hug this whole thing and keep it nice and smooth. So there's a bulge, but it's not too exaggerated. I'm also draping over the rim to keep that nice and smooth. And my fingers are on the inside and they've got to be chill. They don't want to do too much. They're mostly there to keep the wall from falling in. And I'm going to get my nose over it and bring everything up to my nose. And for this one, yes, you get water when you need it. Because there's a lot of flesh contact, so you'll need water in between or moisture. All right, so my thumb is under that bulge. My right hand is keeping the bulge smooth and it's all going straight up. And I need moisture. And when I get to the rim, I want to pass on by like that. I don't want to collapse. So it just passes on by like that. And typically you wouldn't see it because your other hand is there, but like so, all right. So then the next pull is an elevated pull because it's now too tall for your thumb to get down there. Uh, and before I do that, I'm going to soften that rim, smooth that rim out. Again, any little ribbons or lips that form can shear off. So dig a little divot. Now we're gonna recreate what that thumb was doing with a, a bigger <laughs> claw-like thing. So my fingertip gets underneath that divot down here. There's the bulge. It's smaller. Everything's gonna get smaller and more refined at this point. This hand can help keep things from getting funky there. This one is coaxing a little of the clay out over the bulge. For this one, you just get water at the bottom and don't get water again because you can't find your place well enough. So you have to go from there all the way to the top. Dig another divot, let's do it again. So my fingers, this is what they look like without clay. They start like this, they rise up, rise up. You can see the clay is kind of having to make an S shape through them. When you get to the top, so that you don't end up getting a flare, coax it like this. Let's do one more and then I'm gonna cut it open and have a look. So I, in fact, let this one flare a little bit more than I usually would. So I'm gonna try to show you how to avoid that. So I get my finger on the outside there. This one's on the inside. It's naturally taller because it's already sitting on the floor. And then they stay in that configuration. And you see what I'm talking about, the S shape of the clay wall. And when I get to the top, instead of keeping them like that, wherein I end up getting a flare, I'm going to instead back this one off and let this one 
sort of take over. So that was an exaggeration, so let's do it again. Like that. And these I'm just setting aside to let them air dry. 